Hey folks, um, I just wanted to show you something. I bought these a little while ago, sort of a 63rd birthday present from, from, for, for myself from uh, Shop Back East. I'll have the link in the description. And um, these are a sort of border slash Scottish small pipe um, designed by, or at least uh, they consulted Sean, the famous piper Sean Folsom. Um, in the design of these things and um, thought they were great got us got the set really reasonably priced I mean when you if, even if you can find we're sort of a, a look we're sort of in the in the pipe maker cycle the first generation of the of the resurgence of, of small pipe makers is retiring and, and dying off quite frankly so whereas 20 years ago you had many pipe makers small pipe makers to choose from there's not so many now and so when you find a pipe maker, if he'll take you, if he'll accept you as a client, you may have a lengthy waiting list and you're paying a horrific amount of money. But you're also getting the quality. You're getting what you pay for. But this is a very, I won't, I'm not going to call it a compromise, but this is, this is a great answer to the problem. So I would ordered these things. And if you go to the, the link of Sean Folsom's link, his YouTube uh, uh, vid on this subject, you'll you'll see more, some more information. Now, they're great. The they have um, easy drone drone reeds. So we have synthetic reeds, and they're all they're made of Del Delrin or Polypenco or whatever they're calling this synthetic plastic material, which has tremendous tonal characteristics. It's it's really nice. Um, I had bought the border pipe chanter, and it sounds really good. The, the chanter is actually really rich because many border pipes, of even of, of hardwood, particularly period original border pipes, can have a rather reedy kind of nasal sound. But these ones have a really rich tone. This in, is actually a um, practice chanter, which just happens to be a really well-made one with a really well-made practice chanter reed, also from Highland Supply. Um, but, and this is in no way a snub against the company, I, I was able to play them out of the box, but I discovered, and here's an aside, there's the very nicely made uh, velveteen or velvet bag cover, which I pulled off before this, that um, I, I could show you what I'm about to do. So, but I, so I, I played these things out of the box, they're really great. But then I, rem I was reminded about how much I absolutely loathe synthetic bags. I just, they're, they're great, they're fine for many people, but I learned on leather bags and I, and I, to me, the advantage of a leather pipe bag outweighs the advantages of the synthetic bag. And we, you know, we can provide that, that list. But in any case, so, and also uh, what I think many, I think far too few pipers and pipe makers realize, because I never see anybody talking about it or hear anybody talking about it or writing about it on the forum, is how tying in a pipe bag, a set of pipes, the sticks and stocks, tying into the pipe bag is a very personal thing. Now this is part and parcel of me being a tailor perhaps, but the instrument has to be comfortable. You shouldn't be fighting the instrument. And you'll often find blow pipes that are too long or everything else. And again, this is not a dig against the, the vendors at all, but they've, they've tied this in. They've done, a, you know, they've done a, a workmanlike job of tying it in, but the tying in doesn't suit my physique. It's not entirely comfortable. So for part two, which we'll tune in tomorrow, just to let, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my well-used and well-loved, well-loved, um, Illin practice set, and if you're not aware, a practice set for an Illin pipe can't be viewed in the same regard as a practice chanter for a Highland bagpipe. Practice chanters can be valid instruments, but very few Highland pipers regard them as such. They regard them as sort of a throwaway thing, and they don't work, and they don't get too concerned if they're not entirely in tune. This one's a good one in tune, but an Illin an Illin practice set is a bellows, a bag, a connecting pipe. And the chanter. Now the chanter is inside because what I'm going to do is I spent a bit, I tied this in myself from components, and the connecting pipe is is the right length 
I've, you know, I've put, I'm a bit thicker on the waist than I was a few years ago, but everything about the suit it fits me. The, the, um, the distance, how the chanter hangs absolutely fits the, my length of arms and fingers and everything else. This is a comfortable instrument to play. So what I'm going to do, as we'll see in part two, is I'm about to become the Colin Furs of bagpipe because what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically create a frankenpipe from these two instruments. So I'm going to take the, well I've already done that, I've, I've um, take the chanter, uh, strip off most of the hemp, plug it into this uh, Leo Rousum style headst or headstock and also find the optimum place. And it's pretty much a two person job is, is I'm going to tie, you know, strap myself into the pipes and with a helper, we're going to find the absolute optimum place for that drone stock to go. So by this time tomorrow, this will be a very different beast. So um, hope for it. Let's, let's hope this is a success because I'm, I'm committing. There's no going back once I cut a hole in this bag. So um, this could go very well. <laughs> or I might be just buying myself a new pipe bag after this. Check in tomorrow. We'll find out. Here we are again a, a short time later. Um, I've stripped most of the hemp off the chanter and plugged it into the chanter stock, the headstock. Um, what I immediately found was, and, and thought was remarkable, was the change in volume and quality of the tone of the chanter. Is it due to the, the leather bag, the, the brass headpiece, both? Something else I don't know. We have a louder chanter. It sounds louder to me. So that made me. That was. I was quite cheered, quite enthusiastic to see that. So what we had been, what we'd been doing just a few minutes ago, as you can see, I've stripped the uh, the drones and stock out of the of the um, synthetic bag, and with my son's help. I'd inflated the bag, let's see if I can do it one-handed, to find, initially to find where my natural, most comfortable playing position was, and it's, it's not back there, and it's not there, it's, well it is actually about there, um, and then I had him, sorry, I'm just going to plug that back in again so it doesn't let go, uh, <laughs> I was that much thinner when I started learning to play these things, so I may have to increase the length of this this pipe. But um, so we were placing the drones, and this seemed to be the, the optimum spot for me for a border slash Scottish small pipe because the drones are up at a proper angle, and um, it's much more comfortable to play. And the the, the added weight and stiffness of the the leather helps hold it like that but it occurred to me i, I don't have to uh I, i'm not bound by convention right because i know i know from in the past that playing scottish small pipes or border pipes with the bellows with sorry with the drones up here i get a nice blend but i'm i'm not getting the same mix as it were the same balance in my ear between the drones and the chanter it's sounding different for anybody who's brackets unfortunate enough unbracket to to be listening to me an audience but but uh, but i'm not hearing what they're hearing and it's even more profound when i'm playing them over my shoulder because then i've got the alto drone literally right beside my ear so what i'm contemplating now and again we'll see this um part three we'll see if this actually works or not but i'm thinking based on an early drawing in a couple of the, the Lord, Lowland and Border Pipers books of a piper, and the name escapes me just this moment, but he's sitting in a chair smoking his pipe, and his drones are mounted thus. They're mounted down so that they're, when he's sitting and playing, they're resting on his, on his leg, but they could also be played resting on the wrist as you're playing. So I think, I'm, this bit of an experiment, let's see if that'll work. You know, the third part of this series might be me weeping over a ruined pipe bag and going out and shopping for a leather to sew a new one. But on that, that note, I actually have a hack for repairing uh, and moving 
holes that have been misplaced in a leather pipe bag. So that might be the subject of a later video. So thank you and cross your fingers. Let's see how this turns out. Cheers. Well, here we are. It's uh, about an hour later. I um, thought and fiddled about and then finally screwed my courage to the sticking point and stuck my knife into the bag to cut the hole for the, the drone stock. And it, it, luckily I, I'd sat and thought for a bit because um, I was inspired. At the back of my mind, I thought, hang on a minute. And I rummaged around my books and I dug out the Border Bagpipe book by Matt Seattle. And if you are a piper and you're all interested in piping as music and, and dance music more than the, the to my opinion, over-ornamented Highland and certainly the competition idiom, run out and get a copy of this somewhere. But we have this image on the cover, which I'd seen a few times before, um, printed in Common Stock, the Journal of the Lowland and Border Piper Society. And I went through this book quickly a couple of times, and I couldn't find the reference, but the name of this piper is known. It's This engraving was done in early 1800s, but we see how his drones are arranged. And this refers earlier to, to the comments I'd made earlier. And also... Um, what I had done with my, I'd done, I had done the same thing with my, my illin pipes. And I'm just going to whip over here and show you. Um, I'd set up my illin pipes, my Boisvert illin three-quarter set with the drones below the blowpipe. And I got that idea from a documentary on Patty Keenan who mentioned that and it put he, he liked he he'd come up with this way because it put the regulators in a much more comfortable position for him to play so i tried it it, it helped a great deal with my admittedly not stellar ill and pipe playing it's a bit of a mess here because as you can see i used an awful lot of leather glue for air tightness but yeah so that worked so i thought i'd do the same thing here so i located the drone stock where the blowpipe had been and I brought the blowpipe up and I've tied in a new blowpipe. This one was made for me by the late Nigel Richard of Garvey Bagpipes and rather ha than have it languish in the, uh, the spare parts box, I've tied it into this set because I can think of a new home for this piece. So right, um, I've tied it in. I'm just about to strap on the bellows and see if it works and if I have something good to report, well, um, you'll know in a very few minutes, won't you? Okay, hey, here we are an hour or so later. It's still what we West Coasters consider baking hot and um, success. So as, as I'd said in the, in the previous clip, I was inspired by an old engraving of a fellow sitting playing and I still haven't found his name yet. When I do, I'll, I'll post it in the comments or post it in the description. But um, so yeah, so they're tied in. I took a moment to make a couple of very rudimentary drone plugs um, out of chopsticks because <laughs> they were there. So I can, because with, with border and small piping, of course, we don't feel obligated to use all the drones all the time. So, um, so yeah, here we have it. With my alto drone, which is playing at the tonic. Working, still fiddling with the optimum length of the blowpipe and the great thing is this is a, um, a flexible pipe available from Napibri Illins kit shop in Ireland so what I'm doing is I'm just sort of push you know pu pushing the um, the blowpipe in pulling it out a little bit just fiddling about to find that that optimum length for my rotundity, shall we say. But this is this is great. I call this a success because
because the as I sit, the, the balance between the chanter and the drones is is to me it's perfect. From where I'm sitting, I'm getting a lovely balance, and I and I hope um, the balance will be equally nice to anybody who's sitting listening to me play. Because again, before they were either right in my ear or not up to them. This this is uh, I'm liking this because. Um, you know, if you got if you got a well-sounding instrument that's comfortable to play, you're frankly you're more likely to practice. You're more likely to play, aren't you? You shouldn't be fighting the instrument. So, again, the um, all all credit to the people who made this, and uh, and again, I'll, I'll post the link to them. And you know, absolutely no criticism of how they tied it in, but it just wasn't perfect for me. So I've done this. It's much more comfortable to play, and frankly, I'm going to play it more. So thank you, and um, don't be afraid to. Um, to sort of alter your kit if need be, but be prepared to take it on the chin if it doesn't go quite right. You haven't made a mistake, you've just learned a way that isn't working out. This is working for me, although I could have equally tied it with the drone stock upper and the blowpipe down below, and perhaps I'll do that next time just to experiment to see what differences there might be, but thank you and carry on.